This is the first of a three-part series where I'm responding to one of the primary arguments that a Jewish counter-missionary gave me for why he thinks Jesus never existed and that Messianic Jews should leave Messianic Judaism. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when the next video comes out. Every year, the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America hosts a national Messianic Jewish conference. And for the last 40 years, counter missionaries have come and set up tents at the entrance to the campus with signs and tables waving people in with the goal of saving Jewish souls. Basically, they attempt to bring Messianic Jews out of Messianic Judaism through dialogue. A few years ago, I started going over to the tent to meet with these counter missionaries. And the conversations have been thought-provoking, and I absolutely love talking with these guys. At this tent, Eric and I met with a Jewish counter-missionary who has been coming to the same spot at the entrance to the campus for 40 years. Because this was a private conversation, whenever I need to refer back to this counter-missionary, I'll call him by the pseudonym David. So David started our conversation with the following argument. He said that we can find parallels between aspects of Jesus' life and the stories of pagan gods before the New Testament. Therefore, Jesus was a copy of these myths and did not exist. The specific parallels he gave were Osiris, an Egyptian god, he died and was resurrected, and Dionysus, a Greek god, had 12 disciples. And he argued that these similarities with Jesus suggest that Jesus was a copy of them and he never existed as a historical figure. In this video series, we're going to test his argument's logic. We're going to read the stories of these alleged parallels to see if they actually exist. And we're going to weigh the historical odds after considering first century Jewish perceptions of paganism. In this video, I'm going to be examining the logic of David's argument. And first, I want to say this. David provided me with zero evidence that his parallels actually exist. But even if the parallels did exist, and spoiler alert, they don't, but even if they did, it does not logically follow that Jesus never existed, because parallels do not automatically indicate copying. You see, David's argument suffers from a destructive logical error, and the fancy name for this is post hoc ergo propter hoc, which is Latin for after this, therefore because of this. The idea here is pretty simple. It's a logical fallacy to assume that because event B followed event A, event A caused event B. So let me illustrate this with an example I heard from New Testament scholar Dr. Mike Lacona. Around 100 years ago, there was a large ocean liner which name begins with the letter T. It was said to be unsinkable, but on one cold April night, it hit an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean and sunk, resulting in over half of its passengers dying because there was not enough lifeboats. And you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sinking of the Titan in the novel called Futility, written by Morgan Robertson in 1898, 14 years before the sinking of the Titanic in 1912. I'm serious. The shared details between the Titan and the Titanic, they're incredible. These striking parallels between an earlier novel and the later historical event obviously don't cause us to question whether the Titanic really sunk in April of 1912. And if these legitimate parallels don't cause us to question the Titanic, then the alleged parallels between the pagan gods and Jesus shouldn't cause us to question the existence of him. And as we'll see in the next video, the parallels that David pointed to between Jesus and these pagan gods, they don't actually exist. Not only does David's argument suffer from a fatal logical error that renders it useless, but it also puts him at risk of holding what would be an uncomfortable double standard. I found that there are parallels between Jesus and one of the most famous rabbis in Jewish history, the second century Rabbi Akiva. So I'm going to share with you those, those parallels. Both Jesus and Rabbi Akiva are visited by Moses. In Matthew 17 verse 1 through 3, which is describing the transfiguration, this is what the text says. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. In the Babylonian Talmud, in Menachot 29b, this is what the text says. 
Moses went and sat at the end of the eighth row in Rabbi Akiva's study hall and did not understand what they were saying. Moses' strength waned as he thought his Torah knowledge was deficient. When Rabbi Akiva arrived at the discussion of one matter, his student said to him, My teacher, from where do you derive this? Rabbi Akiva said to them, It is a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai. When Moses heard this, his mind was put at ease, as this too was part of the Torah that he was to receive. Also, both Jesus and Rabbi Akiva were executed by the Romans. In Matthew 27, verse 35, and then skipping down to verse 50, And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And also we read in the Babylonian Talmud, Berchot 61b, When the Romans took Rabbi Akiva out to be executed, it was time for the recitation of Shema. Happy are you, Rabbi Akiva, that your soul left your body as you uttered one. We also see that according to tradition, since their burial, neither Jesus' corpse nor Rabbi Akiva's corpse has been found. We see in Acts chapter 2, verse 29, and then skipping down to verse 32, this is what the text says. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. And then we see in the Jewish Encyclopedia, it describes a Jewish tradition about Rabbi Akiva's burial. This is what it says. Elijah took up the corpse, speaking about Rabbi Akiva's corpse. For the dead body of such a saint could not defile, and escorted by many bands of angels, bore the body by night to Caesarea. Elijah and Joshua entered a cavern, which contained a bed, table, chair, and lamp, and deposited Akiba's body there. No sooner had they left it than the cavern closed of its own accord, so that no man has found it since. So David gave three parallels between Jesus and pagan gods, and I've given three parallels between Jesus and Rabbi Akiva, but unlike David, I provided the primary references and read what these texts actually say to demonstrate that there are some legitimate parallels between these two people. But there's even more parallels between Jesus and Rabbi Akiva. Both of their fathers were named Joseph. Both were called Rabbi. Both called God their Heavenly Father. Rabbi Akiva had 12,000 pairs of disciples. And Rabbi Jesus had 12 disciples. Both taught in parables. Both taught that loving your neighbor as yourself is a great principle in Torah. And both were arrested by the Romans. Now that's a lot of parallels. For the sake of argument, let's say David's logic is right and that Osiris and Dionysus have three genuine parallels with Jesus. And this shows that Jesus was copied from these pagan gods and did not exist. Okay, well, I just gave over three times as many parallels between Jesus and Rabbi Akiva than David gave for Jesus and pagan gods. So by David's logic, we should conclude that Rabbi Akiva, a hero of rabbinic Judaism, was a copy of Jesus and therefore did not exist. Do you see the problem? Does it really make sense to say that these parallels disprove the existence of Rabbi Akiva? Of course not. But if David wants to be consistent and say that Jesus never existed because of alleged parallels, he has to say the same thing about Rabbi Akiva. You know what? Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, so I thank you. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. So let me make two concluding points. First, even if there were parallels between Jesus and pagan gods, it does not follow that Jesus did not exist. And second, not only does David's argument suffer from a logical fallacy, but he failed to present any evidence that his parallels actually exist. In my next video, I'm actually going to read the primary sources and show you that David is wrong about the parallels. In the myth, Osiris' death is nothing like Jesus' death, and he doesn't actually rise from the dead. In Dionysus, he doesn't have 12 disciples. If you learned something new, consider giving this video a like, and be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when the next video comes out. If you like to add anything or you disagree with anything I said, I would love to hear about it. Please leave a comment below, or you can email us at 2 messianicjews at gmail.com. That's 2-T-W-O, messianicjews at gmail.com. 
Thanks for listening and see you next time.